Welcome back to a lecture on machine drawing and today uh, in this talk I will be talking about screw threads and threaded fasteners. Most of the mechanical machines that you see contain screws which are basically used for fastening two parts together. So a screw thread is the functional elements used on a bolt, stud or set screws or any other threaded piece or component. So this is the screw. So screw is part of a bolt, stud or set screw or any such kind of piece. A screwed piece consists of a cylinder of round core along with a projection or thread winds its way in the form of a helix. So the threads are formed by uh, in the form of a helix so uh, it is the curve generated by a point moving on the surface of a cylinder or cone in circumferential direction at a constant angular speed and with a simultaneous uniform rate of advance in an axial direction so that is the helix so for example a helix can be seen in some of the stairs even biology, uh, you might have learnt about this DNA. So DNA has helical, helical structure. So that is the helix. So basically, the screw is formed like a helix. So you go along this and basically you advance every time you, uh, you make one round. It can be said that a screw thread is formed by cutting helical groove on a cylindrical surface outside or inside. So here you can see that this um, bolt and this is called nut. So this bolt as well as this nut has got helical screws on them. So this is the externally it has been cut and in the nut it has been cut internally so here we can learn uh, various nomenclature of a thread so for example the top part of this thread so this thread is actually v shaped thread so in a cross section it looks like a v the top part is called crest the bottom part of this v is called root for the the bolt part and for the nut part you can see the crest is this top side and the root is here so this is uh, the difference between the screw on the bolt and a screw on the nut here in a clear picture you can see that this is the crest and this is the root okay so now this is a triangular thread so here you can see that there is a bit of truncation so this truncation is a small portion of the tip of the crest is truncated similarly root of the thread is also truncated so this truncation is basically done to avoid any kind of shearing or breakage of the crest Another thing we should understand is the pitch. So the pitch is the distance between two consecutive crests or two consecutive roots. So this is the pitch and this is called crest and crest has been rounded off in this way. And here is thread angle. So thread angle is the angle between the two inclined surfaces so for v thread this surface is inclined and this surface is called flank so these inclined surfaces are called flanks so the angle between the two flank surfaces is the thread angle so here again you can see some more nomenclatures so for example major diameter or nominal diameter is the diameter of the crest 
so the maximum diameter that this threaded part can have so this is also the diameter of the cylinder cylindrical rod that is used for cutting the thread so this is the major diameter and the minor diameter is by connecting the roots so this is the core of this bolt and the pitch diameter is another definition the pitch diameter is basically the diameter where the distance in the material part so this is the material part because this has been sectioned and you can see this section line so that means this is the material part and this is outside the material part so the distance this distance in the material part and this distance in the outside part are equal so that is called the pitch diameter so pitch diameter is drawn for v-shaped now the major diameter and the minor diameter for the nut part will be slightly reversed so connecting the crests will be the minor diameter and connecting the roots will be the major diameter whereas in the case of a bolt the connecting the the crests makes the major diameter and connecting the roots makes the minor diameter and we know that this is the bolt and this is the nut so this slide uh, tells us about the external thread and internal thread so we have already learned external thread a thread on the outside surface of a member such as bolt stud or screw so this is on the out surface of a cylinder so this is the starting material starting cylinder and we cut the screw on the cylinder whereas internal thread you will see in nut in a nut a thread on the inside surface of a member such as threaded hole or a nut so nuts we can see many of such nuts and if you see inside it has got thread similarly in many machines you will have uh, some holes and inside the hole the thread is cut so that a screw can be attached here so so this is internal thread this is external thread this is the thread angle the crest the root in the internal thread the crest is this one and the root is this one again the major diameter also called outside or nominal diameter so many times nominal diameter word will be used is the largest diameter of a screw thread external or internal on a parallel thread this is the diameter of a cylinder imagine as coaxial with the axis of the screw so if you imagine a cylinder passing through this one so this is the diameter of that cylinder cylinder just touches the crest of an external thread or the roots of an internal thread so here in this case the roots of the internal threads so that is called major diameter the minor diameter also called core or root diameter is the smaller diameter of external or internal thread so smaller diameter in this case will be here this one similarly in this case it will be here connecting the 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 crest in this case connecting the roots and another term is used called lead lead is the distance moved by a particular point on the thread after one revolution of the threads so if you imagine this nut on the bolt and when we rotate the nut basically we move in certain direction so for example we move in this direction so it can also be described as the distance moved by a nut in the axial direction in one complete re revolution so for example if you turn this nut by one complete revolution that means 360 degree what is the distance that this nut will move on this thread so this thread and this thread are basically in the same size and form so they are basically the same type of uh, screws here 
So when we turn this nut one revolution, what is the distance travel? That will be the lead, lead of this screw. So larger the lead, the more faster the nut will move on this, on the bolt. There are also other terms which are used like single thread, double thread, multiple threads. That means for single thread, one single thread has been cut and as you pass in helical manner, you go from one root to another root as you go advance in this direction. But in the case of double thread, you can imagine that two threads have been cut simultaneously. So it has got two starting point. And so that, that means as you go on one of the routes, you basically go by larger distance every time. So this terminology has been used and we will define it further. Forms of screw threads. So threads are standardized to permit interchangeability of bolts and nuts of the same nominal diameter. So the nuts and bolts are used quite frequently in any kind of engineering machine. So therefore it is not possible for us to make, to manufacture nuts and bolts every time differently. So there has to be some standard. So a standard means we can interchange, we can use those standards those standard bolts and nuts for any kind of machine as long as we have some standard already prescribed. And this is prescribed by nominal diameter of the screw. So cross section of a thread varies according to its use but the two main kinds. So these are the two main kinds but there are some other types as well which are basically variations of these V thread and square thread. So often we see in our practical and daily life, we see threads which are of V thread type. But if you look in the machines, for example, if you visit a workshop and you see many kinds of lath machines, vices, and you will see that they don't have v, v thread, but they have square threads. So V threads have inclined flanks. So as we have gone through the definition, so this is the flank surface and this is inclined okay there is certain angle here making an angle between them the flanks of square threads are perpendicular to the thread axis and parallel to each other so the flanks are for example this is square thread so here the flank is perpendicular to the axis axis is this one and these two flanks are parallel to each other whereas in this case they are making an angle so this is the basic definition, definition between V thread and square threads. Again here we can see the internal thread, the external thread and here also internal thread and external thread. So in general V threads are more suitable for fastening as they give more resistance to motion than square threads. V threads are stronger at the base. So for example if you see at the base these threads have got larger material and therefore they are very strong so when you apply some force here so during fastening actually what we apply is the frictional force and so at the root they are much more stronger whereas for square threads they are not very strong V threads are stronger at the base threads can be cut easily with a tap a die or a machine. V threads are not suitable where greater force is to be transmitted when compared to square uh, threads. So square threads are basically used for transmitting great amount of force. So for transmitting force the square threads are very suitable not the V's, V shaped or V threads but V threads are good for fastening purpose. So that's why in machine shops you will see that most of the machines which has got square threads are basically used for clamping or for great amount of force, for applying great amount of force by threaded parts. Now let's look through, um, now let's go through some of the different types of threads 
the standard ones. So first is unified thread or ISO standard. So this is unified unified thread, also known as the metric thread, is basically a V type of threads but with some rounding here. So this is the internal thread that means it is on the nut and this is external thread that means it is on the bolt. And in both cases you can see that this rounding has been done but the amount of rounding is slightly different. So for example here you see D is the dimension of this triangle if you can make this triangle and the angle between the flank is 60, 60 degree. So considering D we can define other, other dimensions. D as well as the P, P is the pitch. So pitch is also defined here, okay, that means it is fixed and D also defined and the rest of the dimensions can be calculated using these equations. So here for example this truncation is d by d over 8. This small d which is the distance from here to here can be given by 0.86p or 0.61p. So external thread on a screw varies slightly in shape from the internal thread inside a nut. So you can see that the geometries are slightly different and the thread angle is the same but theoretical depth and actual depths are slightly different as you can see in this case. So this is a ISO uh, standard as well as BIS matrix screw thread. So BIS is the Indian standard, BIS, Bureau of Indian Standards. So BIS also follows the same as this ISO standard. As I said before, these standards have been created worldwide by an orga organization called ISO so that we all can follow the same geometries and this helps in interchangeability of the nuts and the screws universally. So here are some of the standard dimensions you can see. So for example, if we just look at this one, ISO metric screw threads. So for example designation 6 which means the core diameter or the minor diameter is this one pitch 1 millimeter so pitch can vary so depending upon whether the screw is coarse or fine the pitch can vary so this indicates the nominal diameter so you can find screws of these standard dimensions similarly in some other kinds of uh, unified screw threads and so this is given in, in inches and BSW which is also given in inches so BSW is another another type of standard so basically in our country we follow ISO or in all dimensions in millimeter but as you know in some countries for example in the US people may follow inches so there are some other kinds of standard screws so we need to know so that we can use them whenever it is necessary this figure gives us all the dimensions for our drawing purpose so if we are calculating different dimensions this is for the standard v, v shape or iso standard iso metric standard so for example if the pitch is known and the major diameter is known then we can calculate all the other dimensions so here you can see that this is the internal thread part and this is the external thread part and various dimensions which we have just now mentioned that this truncation is done for rounding off so all these dimensions can be calculated using these equations so in order to avoid sharp corners, the basic profile is rounded at the roots of the design profile of an external thread. Similarly, in the case of internal thread, rounding is done at the root. 
So this is a very important um, important dimensions we need for our drawing purpose. So whenever you are asked to draw a thread, you will follow these equations as necessary. And here we have got some more dimensions given diameter pitch combination for isometric thread. So isometric thread means V, v type thread. So nominal diameter you can select these and the coarse and the fine. So coarse is the largest pitch that you can get and the finer pitch you can get in three different types. So for example if you select 10 nominal diameter this one then you can get 1.5 millimeter as the pitch for the coarse but for finer you can get 1.25 1 and 0 0.75 so as you can imagine that coarse um, coarse screw will have lead larger than the finer so the finer screw will move slowly whereas the coarse one will move very fast so the finer will give you um, less lead but it will give a better grip so for fastening this will be much better compared to this one because the finer pitch has more surface area and basically it is a friction between the two friction between the nut part nut surface and the bolt part so more the area the more friction and therefore the fastening will be much stronger in this case compared to this case. Now we will go through the different types of um, nomenclature of the threads. So first is a metric thread which is the same the V, v type uh, thread that we have just discussed. So BIS specifies use of unified thread profile with metric system as standard. This is also ISO standards. So in this system, the pitch of the thread is fixed instead of the number of threads per unit length. So we define it by saying what is the pitch rather than saying that number of threads per unit length, which both are same, but this is the way we define the thread. So metric thread is designed by letter M followed by nominal diameter in millimeter. So M basically identifies as metric. So for example, if for a screw, if it is written M20, which means it is a metric screw where 20 is the nominal diameter of the screw in millimeter. So this is the, the nominal diameter or the major diameter. And sometimes you will also find that after this 20, there is a cross here and another number is written, for example, 1.5. To five. So in this case, this 1.25 basically represents the pitch. So this is the nominal diameter and this is the pitch both in millimeters. So this is the way metric threads are defined. Another type of uh, thread you can find is white worth thread or British standard white worth BSW. So again, as you can see the angle is 55 degree here not 60 degree and the rounding has been done on both sides in this way and the definition of the different geometries are given here so for example this is d over 6 if this is the d and actual depth d is equal to 0.64 p where p is the pitch so they are all defined here so this is the way we can draw the British standard white worth or BSW. And one thing we can notice that the rounding is same on the crest and the root. Another is called British standard fine or British standard pipe threads. So they have the same profile as white worth profile but with finer pitches and hence the depth is smaller. BSF threads are generally used in automobile aircraft works as well as gas, steam and water pipes. So they are majorly used for pipes. They are specified by the bore of the pipe and not by the outside diameter. 
So BIS, our Indian standard, recommends pipes threads according to BSP. Another type of threads are called seller's thread, which is actually same as the unified or united screw threads that we have just gone through, ISO threads. So V threads with 60 degree angle, one eighth of the theoretical depth is cut off parallel to the axis. So this these are cut like this. So all other definitions are given here. Another type of thread you will find is called British Association thread. It is generally used for small instrument screws. The angle of the thread is 47.5. So here it is smaller angle. 0.236 of the theoretical depth is rounded off at the top and the bottom leaving the actual depth equal to 0.6. So this is more finer. Here the pitch is actually smaller. Okay. So in this case, the British Association, Association thread can be used for small instrument screws where we need better grip or better force to hold the two parts together. Another type of threads are square threads. So, so far we have talked about V threads. Now another type of threads are square threads. So generally used for power transmission and for obtaining large axial movement of the nut and the screw per revolution. So that's why I said that in many of the shop, machine shop, you will find the instruments has got square threads. The sides or flanks of these threads are normal to the axis of the screw and parallel to each other. So these, these are the flanks. So they are normal to the axis. The axis is this one. So they are normal to the axis and they are parallel to each other. For the same nominal diameter of the screws, the pitch of the square threads is usually greater than that of the triangular threads. They are used in lead screw of lathe machine, jack screws and vices. So wherever transmission of force is required and whenever large axial movement is required then we use square threads. In general square threads are weaker than v, v screws in resisting shearing force at the base because here you can see at the base it has got less material and therefore it is prone to shearing at the base compared to the triangular where you have got larger base. The square threads are often written in this way, SQ for square and for example SQ30 cross 6. It means square thread which has got 30 millimeter diameter as the major diameter and 6 millimeter is the pitch here defined here. Another variation of the square thread is called ACME or American Corps of Mechanical Engineering. So variation of square thread and easier to cut. It is stronger at the base because at ba base it is wider, so more material. So therefore it is stronger where the nut is required to engage with or disengage from a screw at frequent intervals. So this is just a different variation of the square threads uh, which has got better application where we have to engage and disengage the screw more often and as you can see other definitions are same this angle is 29 degree and the T definition of T and D are given here so this is acme thread so if you look at the square thread and the acme thread, they look like this. The square thread, that means the flanks are parallel to each other and they are at 90 degree to the axis of the screw. Whereas in the acme thread, there is an inclination here. So this angle and this angle. So the angle between the two is not, um, they are not parallel to each other. So angle is basically 29 degree. Another type of thread is called knuckle thread. So formed by rounding of the corners of square threads. So if you imagine this is a square thread, but the corners have been rounded off. Section of the thread is completely semi 
circle of radius r equal to 0 0.25 p. So this is completely semicircle. This thread can be cast or rolled easily but cannot be economically made on a machine. So this thread is also used on objects made of brittle materials such as glass, porcelain or brittle plastics. So basically these kind of threads are very easy to, um, to connect with each other. So for example, you can imagine the light bulb, all light bulbs have this kind of threads. So very easily you can connect as well as some of the bottle, um, bottle caps have got knuckle threads. So they are very easy to use. So for normal consumers, these threads are preferred. Another good advantage of this thread is this thread can withstand heavy wear and rough usages. So that's why they are used in railway carriages and electrical bulbs. So wherever you have to use in a bit of rough way, because it doesn't have sharp corners or less amount of sharp corners, they are less prone to wear and tear. Buttress thread are another type of uh, threads which are basically a combination of a square and V threads. So one flank is perpendicular to the axis of the screw and the angle between two flanks is 45 degree as you can see here. And this is used for the case where we have to apply major amount of force in, in one particular direction. So if the force is to be applied only in one direction, then this kind of thread is used. So this kind of thread you can see in bench vices. Because here in bench vices only the force is put in only in one direction. And the definition of these dimensions are already given here. So this is another type of threads you will encounter in mechanical engineering. Now this slide is about how we make the threads, some of the threads. So for example, to make thread on external thread, that means thread on a cylindrical part, then we start with this die and this die is put inside the stock here. So this stock has got this handle so we can turn it on. And this die has got, and this die is basically a tool. That means this is made of very hard material and it has got this kind of thread here. And once you put this die onto the cylinder and rotate, turn around, then this die, which acts like a tool, it will cut the thread in this cylindrical part. So this is how we make external thread on a cylindrical rod by using this die and stock. There are many other methods as well, but this is the usual method that you will see in any kind of workshop. And for internal thread cutting, we will use this drill and this tap. So because internal thread is inside the material, so we will use this drill to drill a hole. And once the hole is made, hole is made of little smaller dimension, and then this tap is used. The tap is also a tool. So this is drill is also a tool, tap is also a tool. So here the threads have been cut here. And since this is a hard material, very, very hard material, it will cut the similar thread inside the material. So this material will be much softer than the tap. And we use this tap wrench to basically hold the tap and turn the tap here. Here in all these kind of operations, we use some lubricants because there will be huge amount of friction between the tool and the material. And if there is friction, then it will not be a good, it will not be easy to make these threads. So therefore we use some lubricant. So always you add some oil as lubricant and then you make these threads. Now multi-star threads, so as I talked before, a single star thread consists of a single continuous helical groove for which the lead is equal to the pitch. But for double star threads, actually we have two helical, two helix wound around this cylinder. So this is a single one and this is the double. So here we have got different colors. So this helical shape 
is going around this one and the another one is like this here so it goes like this on the other side it goes like this and then forms like this so this these are basically this is basically two start so there are two starts so because of this dimension actually the pitch the pitch is between these two crests but the lead is double the pitch so that means the nut if you rotate the nut in this thread it will move much faster than this one because the lead is double the the pitch so this is the difference between a single start thread and the double start thread and there can be triple start and multi start threads so these are all used for basically to give larger lead because to achieve larger lead with single thread it will not be possible because in that case the geometrically it will be very difficult to achieve and it will lead to a thinner core and weaker bolt so therefore to avoid that problem what we do is we start with two stars or three stars or multi stars so that we can make higher lead but at the same time the the bolt is strong enough the core is large enough to give it strength again you can see the single start and double start v threads the definitions here and the important thing to note is that lead is double the pitch as you can see here similarly for um, square threads also we can make single or double start square threads so again in this case also the helix have been two helices have been wound around a cylinder here so here the single start for single start lead is equal to p for double start lead is equal to 2p and so on now for the drawing sheet or during the drawing process we actually have some con conventional representation of threads because threads are quite difficult to draw so if we are making thread or making a nut and bolt then we can go for good um, drawing of the nut and bolt but if we are making this as part of a machine where all we have to do is to select a nut then we can shorten it the process so that we do not have to spend so much time on drawing the uh, the threads so for external threads in method 1 two continuous thin lines drawn parallel to the axis thus indicating the minor and and or root diameter of the thread so here you can see that two lines have been drawn thin lines so these two thin lines basically represent the root or the minor diameter of this external thread here the limit of the length of the thread is shown by continuous thick line so this is the limit so this is a thick line perpendicular to the axis and up to the major or outer diameter of the thread so it goes like this the run out of the thread which is here so this part is called run out is shown by lines drawn at an angle of 30 degree or 45 degree to the axis so this is at 45 degree here to the axis so this is the run out and in this view we show the major diameter by this circle and the minor or the root is shown by this circle which is cut here so only 75 percent of the circle is shown and 25 percent is cut in this fashion so this is the way we represent the external thread and this is external thread in section so you can see in this section one difference is that this thick line has been replaced by a dashed line here and for internal threads we can show by this method so here these dotted lines represent the the major and the minor diameter so this is the major and this is the minor diameter in section we can do the section line and in the side view here we show the inner the minor diameter as continuous circle whereas the major diameter is broken at this point only 75 percent is shown so this this is one difference from the external 
threads. In method two, external V threads or ex can be shown by this one, this method. Sloping straight lines alternatively thick and thick, spaced one half the pitch. So this way we can make alternatively thick and thin lines here. And this distance between the thick and the thin line is half the pitch. So this is, uh, this is not external, this is internal. So internal V thread is similar in that way. Uh, again, we draw uh, thin and thick lines and inclined thick and thin lines and the distance is the pitch here. So only difference is slope of the lines being opposite. So in this case, the slope is this way. In this case, the slope is this way. So this is a shorter way to uh, represent the thread on your drawing sheet. For external square threads, this thread is represented by sloping parallel lines spaced one half the pitch apart. So these parallel lines the depth of the thread is equal to one half the pitch. So depth here is one half of the pitch. Similarly, for the internal square thread, in its outside view, this thread is also shown as described in method one. In its sectional view, it is shown by parallel lines sloping in opposite direction to the external thread. The depth of the thread is shown at right angle to the axis. So this depth of the thread is shown right angle to the axis of the screw. So the BIS actually recommends method one, which is this one in the method one. This is the way to uh, show the thread in your drawing sheet. Now other thing to know about screws is right hand and left hand threads. If a nut when turned in clockwise direction screws on a bolt, the thread is right hand thread. So most of the threads you come across are actually right hand. So if you imagine a bolt and you have a nut and you turn the nut in clockwise direction on this bolt, then the nut is actually going inside. So it is screwing on the bolt. So it is right hand. But if it screws off the bolt, the thread is said to be left hand. So for example, if you are turning in clockwise direction, but instead of going in this way, so for example, a nut is turned this way, and this is the bolt. And instead of going this way, it, if it goes the other way, then it is called left hand thread. So left hand and right hand threads will be written here. LH means left hand and RH means right hand. So basically we should know that in most of the application we use right hand threads but in some application we will use left hand left hand threads. Uh, so for example one application is coupler nut. A coupler nut or turnbuckle is an example of a machine element in which both right hand and left hand thread threads are used. So here these two um, bolts we have and they have got threads but one is right hand and another is left hand. So this way if we turn the nut here in this case either we are tightening the this rope or or we are loosening this rope. So by turning just in one direction they move in the opposite direction. So this is the sectional, sectional view of the coupler nut. So these kind of coupler nuts are used for applying great amount of tension. So this is for example here, tension in basically uh, ropes, in wire ropes. So by turning the nuts, you can provide either increase the tension or decrease the tension. So always we use this for tensile load rather than for compressive load or any kind of torsion. So this is mainly for tensile load. So great amount of tensile load can be applied by just turning the screws. So this is one application of the negative 
and the um, sorry the right and the left hand screws 